All right, chapter five, section six. Test on Tuesday. Triangle A, B, C. Sides A, B, C. If I know three things in that triangle, including a ratio of, or a pair of an angle and the side that matches with it, so if I know angle A and I know side A and then one other thing, maybe it's side B, we can use the law of sines because we have that angle and side pair that I can set up a proportion with and I can solve the rest of my triangle. But what do we do when I don't have that angle side pair relationship? Then I need a new law. Thankfully we have it, the law of cosines. And the law of cosines is really one relationship. I am going to use this last one to build the pattern of the relationship. Because if you look at the first part of it, it looks exactly like the what? Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What the law of cosines says is any side squared will equal the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times those other two sides, AB, AB, times the cosine of the angle that matches with the side that you're trying to find. That's the pattern. So I can read any of these patterns. I could do the first one, which is A squared equals, well, it must be B squared plus C squared, because B and C are the other two sides minus 2 BC, the other two sides, cosine of A, the angle that matches with my A squared over here. That's the pattern to the law of cosines. One nice thing about the law of cosines, the information they give us always forms triangles. There's no ambiguous cases when they set these things up for us. So here they say solve triangle ABC, given that A is 11, so my side A, and side B is 5, so across from my B, there's my side 5, and angle C happens to be 20. I do not have across from the 20 this side, so I cannot use the law of sines. As long as I have three things, though, I can solve a triangle now. Any three things, either using the law of sines or the law of cosines. Any three bits of information. They can all three be angles. They can all three be sides. I can solve it as long as I, I'm sorry, I can't solve it if they're three angles. I have to know one side. If I know one side and any two other bits of information, I can solve a triangle. But I have to have one side. So let's see if we can set it up. C would pair up with 20. So C squared equals the other two sides. I don't care the order. When I add, it doesn't matter the order. 5 squared plus 11 squared. It could be 11 squared plus 5 squared. Maybe I'll change it to that. It doesn't matter the order minus 2 times these two sides. Again, when you're multiplying, it doesn't matter the order. Cosine of, now it needs to be the angle that pairs up with side C, so that is 20 right out here. So if I want to know C instead of C squared, all I do is take the square root, and it'll be the positive square root. Why don't you run your calculators through this problem and make sure your square root is covering everything. All this stuff is inside that square root. And of course, you need to be in degree mode because we're taking the cosine of 20 degrees. Six point five. Why don't you give me one more place? Six point five three. And again, they may have just gone. Excuse me, just gone to one decimal. Six point five three. Now, if I want to solve, I have a pair. You could continue with the law of cosines. I'm going to flip back to the law of sines because it's a little bit faster. So I can now say the sine of 20 degrees over my 6.53. And here's where I don't want to round off too soon because we get rounding error compared to the book. Equals sine of, well, I don't know an angle. Let's say across from A. Sine of A to 11. 
So remember how this worked. In order to get A, I'm going to have to take the inverse sine of 11 times sine of 20. Go ahead and try this. Divided by 6.53. Thirty five point one eight. So now I have my angle. The only thing I am missing is my third angle B. So we know triangles add up to one hundred and eighty. Uh, oh, good point. That can't be thirty five. So there are two of them. Either it's thirty five or it's the supplement of thirty five. Must be the supplement of 35. Good thing Joel was awake this Sunday morning and spotted that. 180 minus 35 point, was it? I forgot, 30. So what's our angle A? 144.5. There we go. Now I can find my third angle. I know they all add up to 180. We'll subtract our 20. We'll subtract our 144.82. And we will get our last angle, B. Fifteen point one eight. When you look in the back of the book, you may be off slightly because of rounding is what's going to happen because they could have taken in a different order. They might have stuck with the law of cosines. And these things are so sensitive, they're so precise when you take sines and cosines that rounding error can build in a little bit. But you should be close enough that you can tell, yeah, I did it right. It's not going to be a hundred and it's not going to be a hundred and fifty degrees. Maybe it's 145 instead of 144.8. It should be real close to that value that you have. How about if I have three sides to it? Well, I am going to pick some angle. Let me pick angle A. And I'm going to set up the law of cosines. 9 is the one that pairs, so 9 is what's going to be by itself squared. Other two sides, 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 7 times 5 times a cosine of angle A because it matches with the 9. And I'm wanting to isolate that thing. So I would subtract these terms here to the left side. 9 squared minus 7 squared minus 5 squared. I've gotten rid of those terms. How would I get rid of these three numbers? I would divide by negative 2 times 7 times 5. Now that has gotten me down to the cosine of A. I want A. So what do I need to do to get the angle? Inverse cosine of. Try this one. Now make sure that numerator and that denominator are calculated before the division takes place. Ninety-five point seven four, and again they may round off more, but looks reasonable. And then once again, once I have an angle side pair, I can flip back to the law of sines, and I can finish that thing out. And you could continue with the law of cosines. It'd take a little bit longer, a few more steps. So dot dot dot. Solve means I need to find them all, but I'll give you guys as much time to work as possible, so I'll just move on. Area of a triangle. What's the area formula from geometry for a triangle? One half base times height. So let's take this triangle. It's triangle ABC, and so this is side A, that's side C, that's side B, this whole thing over here, and I'm trying to find the area of it, so I'm going to call the height h. I'm going to see if I can come up with some formula based on geometry. 
I know the area of the triangle is one half its base, which happens to be B, times its height, which happens to be H. How convenient. Now, all I'm doing is I'm substituting my terms in here to that formula right up there. Well, how could I get that height? That height is part of this right triangle right over here. And a minute ago, we did something similar to this. If I knew this angle, then I can use the right triangle ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine. I know the sine of this angle A equals the opposite H over the hypotenuse C of that right triangle. So if I solve this for H, I just need to multiply by C. C times the sine of angle A. That would be my height. So let me come back over here and replace that. One half B times C times the sine of angle A. That H is right there. C times sine of A. Well, guess what I just came up with? A formula for the area of a triangle that uses two sides and the angle between those two sides. Here's side B, here's side C, and here's angle A between those. You could repeat that process using angle C and angle B instead of angle A, and you would get the other two formulas that they have listed here. The area of any triangle is always one half the product of two sides, any two sides, times the sine of the angle between those two sides, the included angle. So I can do one half of AC, where it is. Here's AC times sine of angle B. Or I could do one half of AB times sine of angle C. So find the area of this regular polygon using this new formula. There are different ways of doing it. The area of a regular octagon. Eight sides, eight angles, all equal, inscribed inside a circle that happens to have a radius of nine. So here it is. They want to know the area of this whole octagon. Well, let's see if we can get the area of that little circle right there. First, I want to know, can I figure out the size of that angle? How would I do it? 360 divided by 8. There would be eight of those little triangles if I drew them all out. So what's the size of the angle in that little triangle? Forty-five. So I can find the area of that one triangle by using this new formula. It is one-half the sum of two sides. Well, I know two sides. They're both nine. Times the sine of the angle between. I just figured out the angle between. It's 45 degrees. That would give me the area of one of those triangles. If I wanted the whole octagon, what would I do then? Times eight. Or if you wanted to shorten it down, one half of eight is four. Four times nine times nine times sine of 45. What's the area of the octagon? Two twenty nine exactly. Two twenty nine point one square inches. So just using a new area formula. Next new formula, Heron's formula. There's another way of getting the area of a triangle when all I know are the sides of the triangle, know nothing about the angles. It's called Heron's formula. And it uses something called the semi-perimeter. What is perimeter of anything? Distance around. Add up all the sides. What does the prefix semi mean? Half. Half the perimeter is what it is. So if my sides are A, B, and C, the semi-perimeter is A plus B plus C divided by 2. It's called the semi-perimeter. We're going to use the letter S in the formula to stand for the semi-perimeter. The, the area of any triangle is the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus one side, times the semi-perimeter minus the second side, times the semi-perimeter minus the third side. 
it will give us the area of a triangle. Find the area of a triangle with sides of 13, 15, and 18. Well, the first thing I need to do is figure out the semi-perimeter so I can use that in my formula. 23? 23. So now I can get the area of my triangle, the square root of 23, the semi-perimeter, times 23 minus 13 times 23 minus 15, and if you wanted to do that subtraction in your head, it would shorten it down, times 23 minus 18. What's the area of that triangle? See if you can verify Carl's. Number, or correct it if it needs correct. Okay, 95.92, Heron's formula. So with the law of cosines, we have two area formulas for a triangle. One half the product of any two sides times the sine of the angle between, and the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus each side, that product. The bases on a baseball diamond happen to be 90 feet apart, 90, 90, 90, 90. The front edge of the pitcher rubber is 60.5 feet, 60.5 feet from home plate, back corner of home plate. Find the distance from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's rubber to the far corner of first base. So they have given us a triangle right here. And we know we have 45 right here, we have 60. 0.5 right over here. We have 90 feet right over there. We're trying to find C over here. So I can use, you help me out. What can I use? Law of cosines. Can you set it up for me using these values? C squared. Now to shorten it up, I'm going to say C equals the square root instead of saying C squared, but that's how it would start. C squared. 60.5 squared plus 90 squared stick it in those calculators that's correct law of cosines It does. It's not 90 degrees right there. It's a little bit closer. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, we're about to find out. If that's 60.5, then it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, but I don't think it is. Is what is it? 63.72 feet. So in other words, it's close, but it's not a 45, 45, 90. So pitchers, the pitchered rubber is a little bit closer than that line between first and third base. So it's not quite exactly in the middle. I don't know who dreamed that up. I mean, why didn't they just stick it in the middle? But anyway, they didn't. Measuring a dihedral angle. Do you remember it all when we were in geometry class and we talked about platonic solids? We didn't study them much at all, but it was just brought up in one section. Platonic solids are, I need some platonic solids. There are figures, who three-dimensional figures, whose sides are regular polygons. And there's only five of them, five platonic solids. And one of them is the tetrahedron, which is made up of equilateral triangles. There are four of them, three equilateral triangles on the side, one on the bottom there. So there are four equilateral triangles that make up this tetrahedron. Regular tetrahedron, a solid with four faces, each of which is an equilateral triangle. Find the measure of the dihedral angle, the dihedral angle coming down one face, the angle to another face. It's that angle right there when they say the dihedral angle. That's what we're trying to find. Angle formed along the common edge of two intersecting faces. So they have given us two as the length of each of the edges of these 
equilateral triangles that we have. So if it is two and equilateral, I know that all of the original angles in this one face right over here, they are all 60 degrees. It's an equilateral triangle, which is also an equilangular triangle. So if I bring a line right down the middle here, I've just divided that 60 in half, and so I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if I divide this two and half, I've got a one here, I've got a two there, that's how I figure out that that's the square root of three. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the exact same thing happens on the bottom. This is a square root of three, because it's just coming right through the middle. So I am trying to figure out that blue dihedral angle, which is exactly across from that two, the edge over there if you can see that three-dimensional stuff. So I can figure out that angle with my law of cosines. That two squared is the one that matches up with that angle I'm trying to find. So can you fill in the rest of my law of cosines? Square root of three squared. They're both square root of threes both of my sides. Can you see that? The, the two sides. It's a 3D thing. I know I need a 3D thing. I might have one in here. Let's see if I have one in here that we can look at. I don't. I don't have one. This is as close. You just have to imagine that these triangles are the same size as that triangle down there. So what is happening is I'm trying to find this angle from the middle of this to the middle of that one right there. And each of these things, that's a square root of three, and this is a square root of three coming down to the same height, and that's a square root of three. So my two sides are the square root of three across from this edge, which is my two. All the edges are twos. Doesn't don't quite have the right model. Minus 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 3 times the cosine of that angle. They were using the letter B, so I'll use the letter B down there. What's square root of 3 squared? 3 plus 3 minus 2 times 3 times cosine of B. So I'm going to do some simplifying on this because it's so easy with the numbers before we rearrange it. So I have a 6 minus 6 cosine of B. So now I can subtract my 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. I can divide by my negative 6. That's my cosine of B. Or my B is going to equal the inverse cosine of what fraction? Positive 1 third of 1 third. What do you get for angle B? 7. 70.5, 70.53 degrees. There's our dihedral angle using our law of cosines again. That's it. So you still got quite a bit of time even on this little shortened schedule, 1040. So you have 25 minutes still.